Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my tutorial on how you can create a featured content slider, gallery, whatever, for any website, including WordPress. If you haven't watched the previous parts of this tutorial, I guarantee you, you will be confused. So definitely go and check those out prior to watching this. And also, if you want to dramatically increase the ability for you to actually understand what I'm doing here, you definitely also want to check out the code that is in the underbar. What I did today is I created these nice little Little arrow tools that are going to allow us to flip through all of the different content. This also is going to work with just one featured slider group here of five pictures and it also will work with three. And I actually could set it up so that it would work with an infinite variety of these but I figured no one would ever want more than 15 different featured articles so that's why I kept it where it is. So in this tutorial you're going to learn how to do all of that so let's get into the code. All right, there's very few changes I need to make and to get all this to work, but some of the stuff I'm doing is a little bit complicated. I'm in featuredcontent.php. If you saw the previous tutorials, you remember that. Now, of course, I don't want that to be there, so I'm going to delete it. But pretty much all I have to do here is come in before NTT featured content, the div, is closed out, and I need to add my thumbnails. That's it. That's the only thing I have to do with this. So I'm just going to go div, and then I'm going to say class. We actually created this in a previous part of the tutorial, and I could just copy and paste, but I'm just going to put it in here. And this tutorial, to a certain extent, is a response to the comments that I get all the time. Why don't you do more complicated tutorials? The reason why is complicated things are very hard for me to teach teach you. And I would greatly appreciate it if you'd leave a comment below if you did like this tutorial. And I'm not saying that just to get tons of comments. All right, so I'm going to create my left arrow tool or my back button. And then I'm going to close that div. And then to save myself some time, I'm going to copy this, paste it in there, and then I'm going to put right because that's the only thing that changed there. And then I'm going to put right here also. And there you go. Now I have both my left button and my right button that will show up on the screen. And I'm just linking out to the images of them. So after I file save that, I'm then going to go into my style.css file. Again, all the codes in the underbar. And I'm going to put some styling in here for those two specific guys. So NTT, I'm going to say left button. And then I'm going to do some CSS styling on all this. And I'm going to put some space in here so you can see all this all at one time. All right, so I'm going to position these buttons absolutely, which just simply means I'm going to tell them at precisely where to appear inside of this div. And I'm going to say from the top of the div, I want it to go down 267 pixels. And left, 392 pixels. And there you go, there's that whole thing. Now I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, and I'm going to define the right button. Again, position is going to be absolute, 267 pixels from the top. That also makes sense. And then I went ahead, and from the left side, it's going to be 925 pixels. 925. Okay, great. So I got that. Now the only other thing I'm going to need to do is to handle some styling in regards to what happens if someone hovers over these images. So I'm just going to go image, and I'm going to go hover. And I'm going to change the opacity based off of that. And I'm also going to do a couple other things as this tutorial progresses. So if they hover over it, it's going to have an opacity of 60%. That's what that means right there. And then I'm going to do precisely the same exact thing with the right button. And there you go. File save that. And I'm all done with everything in the style.css file. Now I have to go on to the JavaScript file and fix everything there. All right, so this guy's going to change pretty dramatically, mainly because a lot of this information right here is all going to be put into a function so that I'm able to automatically not only update the information, let me show you what I mean. See, all of this, every single thing in here is going to have to be updated whenever I click on these arrows. So I need to be able to delete everything that's currently here and then put everything back in again and then reset everything to the defaults. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done to get all that to work. So one thing I decided to do is to take out this div area right here, NTT text underscore div, and all of this information that pertains to the different types of featured content, including the excerpts, which is right here, and the images, meaning the featured pics, which are right here, and then the thumbnail images. So I took all of those guys out 
and I put them in separate files. So there's a lot of information here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dynamically grab all this information only one time to save on memory and resources and so forth. And I'm going to save it to variables. And then I'm going to go in and fix everything as different changes occur. So what I got to do now is to define the number of featured content pages that are totally going to show up. So I'm going to do this by creating a variable and it's going to be called num featured pages. And by default, I'm setting this up to three. But like I said before, you can have anywhere from one to three with my very specific tool. And technically, you could have this set up to work with an unlimited number of posts. But like I said, I never thought anyone would ever want to focus on more than 15 different articles. Kind of insane. So that's why I kept it where it is. So that means there's going to be three potential groupings of five images and five groupings of featured content. So this is what that means. Okay. Well, then what I got to do is I'm going to create the variables that are going to hold all of the content in these files. All of this information is going to be dynamically grabbed from these files and it's going to be saved in these variables right here. So I'm defining them and I'm giving them no value to start out. So that's what those are for. Since I have three pages, I need to define three of these guys. And it's just that easy. I just defined three of them. Now, all of this information right here is going to be sent over into a setup function that's going to run every single time this guy starts. I'm going to create that in a minute. This right here is going to remain because it makes sense for this to stay out of that setup function because it mainly only has to run one time. And then all of this information is going to be sent to that setup function as well. But there's a couple other things I need to define inside of here. So I'm going to put in a comment just so you can see where the new stuff is. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to define a variable NTT set interval ID. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to create and store the ID each time set interval is called, what we did in the previous tutorial is we were calling rotate images repetitively over and over down here. But what happens is I'm actually going to have to create two of these guys and to get them to work, I'm going to have to delete the previous set interval that was set. I hope that makes sense. So what I did previously was I created this set interval function that continually calls the rotate images function. So what I'm doing up here is I'm storing the ID that is associated with set interval and I'm actually going to come in here and I'm just going to change it right now. So I'm going to copy this guy right here and then down here I'm going to store that ID in here. Later on I'm going to destroy this function whenever I recreate it. You're going to see how things progress. Then I'm also and this is another new thing. I'm also going to have to track what featured content page is being shown. Remember there are three pages and the first one that's going to be shown is going to be the first one. So that is what that is. And this is going to change also. And then I'm going to call the function that's going to set up all of the defaults whenever I put new featured content on this page. And that is pretty much it. That's what I have here in regards to the new stuff. So now what I got to do is create this function right here that sets up all our defaults. And we're going to be doing a lot of copying and pasting. So after we get out of here, I'm going to call function and it's going to be called NTT setup featured content. I'm going to do a lot of copying and pasting. I'm going to jump up here to where we were before. And I'm going to copy this guy and this guy right here first. And then I'm going to jump down into my new function I just created and paste that information in there. And then I'm going to jump back up here again and jump from there the whole way down to here. And I'm going to cut that out of there as well and paste that into there. So really nothing has changed. I just copied and pasted information that I previously had used in the top of this function. Now I need to bind the new arrows that I put on the screen to a function that is going to execute different types of code based off of whether the left arrow key is clicked on or the right arrow key is clicked on. So this is new and simply with jQuery all I do is go dot NTT underscore right button and then image and to bind the clicks on these images to a function just type in that and then grab next featured content all right well i need a click event to be bound to the left button also just going to copy and paste that left another thing i'm going to have to do is if there is only one featured content grouping of five on the screen, there's no reason for the arrows to show up. So I'm going to go if NTT num featured pages is equal to one, then I want certain, I want to make certain that those guys do not show up on the screen. And to save myself some time, I'm just going to copy this, paste that in there. And here I'm going to go CSS, and I'm going to change the opacity. 
to zero. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the left button. So that should make sense to you. And then on top of that, what I also wanted to be able to do is unbind the click that I just set up. Because just because the thing has an opacity of zero doesn't mean that the bind event doesn't still exist. I don't want them accidentally clicking on something they can't even see. So I'm going to take that event off that I created right here. I'm taking it off if there is only one featured content page. And that's all I need to set up in the setup function that you see right here. Basically a lot of copy and a paste in. So what do I have to do? I have to grab next featured content, which is right, and good thing I looked at this. I'm also gonna have to create this function. So I'm gonna have to create the grab next featured content, copy that, and I'm actually gonna put it up here. So right like this, and then I'm gonna go function, grab next featured content. It is not passed any attributes. And then I'm gonna say if, featured content being shown. And remember by default, this starts off at one. So if the featured content being shown whenever the next button is clicked on the screen, I'm gonna take all the information that was copied from these files over here, in this situation next, I'm gonna take all this information and I'm gonna copy it to the main featured content div. And you do that using the HTML function and post content underscore HTML to right like that. If you don't remember where this comes from, it comes from right here, NTT post content that was taken from those files that I set up previously. So that's what I'm accessing and I'm saying that I want it to be put in the div called NTT featured content, which is the div that surrounds the entire featured content area. And I'm just gonna copy this. Then I'm gonna change the value of featured content being shown to be equal to two. And then we get to do a lot of copying and pasting. Here, I'm gonna put the else statement on a different line keep this from getting horribly confusing. And in this situation, I'm gonna say, if it's two, and I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna provide the proper actions to make sure that the featured content for three is set up. And then I'm just gonna copy this, else if it's equal to three. And yes, I could have did this with a switch statement, but I didn't. If it's three, that means start over from the beginning, and then that's all set up properly. And now that I have new featured content inside of here, I need to call the function that is going to clear my previously set interval function, which is this guy down here. I need to clear this ID so that I don't have multiple of these guys floating around. So I'm just going to say NTT set interval ID, and that's going to eliminate the previously set up set interval function. I'm then going to call rotator index and set this the first child thumb. And this sounds really complicated, but in essence, what I'm doing here is I'm saying whenever it is flipped over that it should be set to the last featured content on each one of these pages. So it's jumping to beaver, jumping to shark. That's all that that's doing because rotator index allows me to track which featured content is being shown out of those five. And then I'm going to call NTT. There's not much code left, by the way. NTT set up featured content, which is the guy that I had previously that I had created right here, NTT set up featured content, see? So I'm calling this and I'm saying fix everything up that I just put on the screen. In essence, that's what I'm doing. And what's really cool is now I'm gonna be able to select this and copy it and paste it in because not many things have changed. So instead of next, this is gonna be last. And again, this is the function that's gonna be called whenever the left button is clicked on. So if one is being shown currently, I want to go to the previous, and that happens to be three. If two is currently being shown, I want to go to the previous, which is one. And of course, I need to change this and also change this, which is the information that's being saved inside of there. And if three is currently being shown, well, if I want to go to the previous, that would be two. So I have to change those to two. And nothing else needs to be changed for this entire thing. That is it. I technically could have created one function that does all this, but hey, I'm not perfect. And then the last thing I have to create is the function that's actually going to go into featured data one, these different text files in which I have all the information in regards to the different types of featured content. It's gonna grab it and it's gonna save it to a variable to be used later on. And the name of this function is get featured content NTT. It's going to be passed an attribute that is going to tell it how many of these pages actually exist, meaning these pages that have all this data on it. And then I'm gonna say if, and I'm going to copy this just so I don't have to type it in over and over again. This guy right here, meaning that there are two pages set up to pull information from. If that is true, dynamically, I'm going to go and grab this information. And to a certain extent, I'm doing this just to show you how to grab information dynamically using jQuery. Text, function, then I'm going to define a function where 
the data that is gathered from this file is going to be saved. And I'm going to skip to the next line to keep this understandable. And then I'm going to save to a variable, which again, let's just jump up here and grab this. This is where it's going to be saved, just so you know. Scroll back down. Paste is equal to data. And then fun, fun, I get to copy and paste some more right after I close off this function that I defined right inside of here. Copy and paste. And then if there's, remember, two of them, well, that means that data2 exists. And I'm going to save it inside of this guy right here. Then I'm going to go else if there are three of these featured content pages. Now I just got to put these get statements in here more than once. So I'm going to copy. And I could have really saved time with a switch statement this time, but either way. And then I'm going to copy this because I need to get the third one. And to get the third one, I just type that in there and that in there. And then close that off. And we're almost done. Else, I'm going to just assume that there's always going to be at least one grouping of featured content to grab. I'm actually going to build it in just to make sure that it does stay that way. And I'm going to set this to one and set this to one. And I'm going to have to take this guy right here and close off all these functions, of course. And then I'm closing off the else statement. And I already have it set up so that the function is already closed. So that is what we need to do to be able to create this beautiful little guy right here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, but please be nice. Otherwise, till next time.